My mother was diagnosed with stomach cancer. My husband claimed cancer was incurable and advised me to give up treatment. He said, it's better to take her on a trip than to squander money on the hospital, so as to avoid ending up with nothing if I insisted on treatment, he would divorce me. Only after the divorce did I find out, it was a misdiagnosis in my mother's case, his mother was the one with the actual cancer. When he tried to borrow money from me, I threw his words back at him, cancer is incurable, why don't you take your mother on a trip? My mother-in-law often mentioned that she was suffering from stomach discomfort. Coincidentally, my mother also complained about her appetite recently. Hence, I decided to schedule a gastric examination for both of them. Unexpectedly, my mother-in-law just had some inflammation, but it was my mother who was diagnosed to have cancer. Holding the diagnosis, I was struck like lightning. Inadvertently, I concealed the diagnosis, assuring both of the elderly that there was no significant issue and they need not worry. As there was only me left in the car after sending them home, I could no longer hold back my tears. Lost in utter despair, I dialed my husband Makoto's number. As a single-parent family, he was the closest person to me in this world apart from my mother. In my most fragile moment, he was the only one I could think of. Hearing me cry, Makoto's voice instantly tensed up, asking if there were issues with his mother's medical report. I shook my head softly, sobbing while saying, No, Makoto, it's not your mother, but mine instead. My mother is diagnosed with stomach cancer. What should we do? We have been in love for ten years, and we have a child. Instinctively, I looked to him for support and trust. I thought that he would comfort me, telling me the urgency to search for a solution together, just like how I had comforted him multiple times when he is demotivated. However, his response after knowing it was my mother who had cancer was like a slap in my face. At first, he let out a sign of relief, seemingly carefree after confirming that it was not his mother who had cancer. Then, he cautiously asked me, it's stomach cancer, Willow. Do you want to pursue treatment? I was dumbfounded by his question. First, I was stunned, and then bursts of anger replaced my shock. I yelled almost frantically, of course, we should pursue the treatment, Makoto. She is my mother. However, my shouting did not calm him down. Makoto's reaction was surprisingly calm. Heaving a sigh, he said, Willow, but stomach cancer is incurable. Also, we still have car and home loans to pay. Even though Vincent's annual tuition fee is catching up on us, where do we get extra money for your mother's cancer? So, in his eyes, the cars and houses, or even our son's education, are more important than my mother's life. Ridiculous. Very ridiculous. I suddenly felt that our marriage was a joke. I merely told him about my mother's cancer diagnosis, and his first reaction was not to comfort me, but to fear that it would lower his quality of life. Then he discouraged me from seeking treatment for my mother. Angrily, I questioned him, Mikoto, if your mom had cancer, would you seek treatment? Mikoto paused momentarily and condescendingly told me, no, I would take my mom traveling instead, letting her spend her final days with dignity and values instead of spending them in a hospital. I suddenly felt like laughing. Of course, I do not believe that he would remain as calm if the shoe were on the other foot. Now, it is merely because he is not the one being whipped. If it were really his mother falling ill, he might be even more anxious than me. Initially, when his mother had a flu, he worried so badly and quickly admitted her to the hospital, anxious that she might suffer an accident. So why now, when it comes to my mother, he could stand and lecture so nonchalantly? I dried my tears and sarcastically responded, traveling, huh? Every single cell in a late-stage cancer patient's body is in pain. How do you expect them to travel around with their frail body? If they give up treatment, they may only have a few months left. But if they pursue treatment, they could potentially extend their lives to a few years, maybe even longer. So, why are you telling me casually to give up? Mikoto was well aware of his guilt and was somewhat speechless when I reproached him. He still wanted to argue further, but... I interrupted him impatiently. I've made up my mind to do everything for my mom's treatment. If you don't want to pay, it's fine. We can sell this house. When we bought it, I also paid half of it. We sell our marital home, I use my half for my mom's treatment. The house cost a million when we bought it, we each paid half, now it's worth over two million. Half of the price is enough for my mom's treatment. Surprisingly, Makoto rejected my proposal, we can't, Willow, this is our marital home, if we sell it, where will we live? Moreover, you have to consider our son. This house is in a good school district. 
If we sell it, where will our son go to school? I scoffed, what's the difference between studying here or there? Our son just started primary school, it's the same everywhere. Selling the house doesn't mean we can't rent. Are you suggesting that once we sell the house, you'll have to sleep on the street? Mikoto took a deep breath, as if he finally made up his mind, a willow, if you insist on doing this, I can only divorce you. I am just your husband, not your father. I have no responsibility or obligation to pay for your mother's illness. You pick one, your mom or me, although I was completely disappointed with Makoto, when the word divorce came out of his mouth, my heart was still deeply stabbed. I never thought that my marriage with Makoto would end for this reason. At my most helpless time, the man I decided to spend my life with chose to divorce me. I vividly remember the vows we made at our wedding. He once said that no matter what difficulties we faced, he would stick with me. But now, facing just a little setback, he wants to dump and ditch me, with the harsh reality before me, I suppressed the bitterness in my heart and nodded, okay, I will take my mom to the capital for treatment in a few days. We'll go to the Civil Affairs Bureau to get the divorce certificate tomorrow, and by the way, we'll list the house for sale, fine the willow, as long as you don't regret it, after uttering those words, Makoto coldly hung up the phone. I guess this is the darkest moment of my life. A loved one has cancer, with an uncertain future, and just discovered the ugly truth about another loved one. These two pains are agonizing and hard to bear. As if a walking zombie, I returned home, planning to pack up and take my son to live at my mom's for a few days. My mother missed her grandson, and I had no idea when we'd meet. Unexpectedly, as soon as I walked in the door, I saw my mother-in-law. She was sitting on the sofa, holding Vincent, and glaring at me angrily. She gave a signal, and my son understood, rushing towards me and wrapping his tiny arms around my legs, tears streaming down his face. Mommy, can you not divorce daddy? Chi-Chi's parents divorced and they don't care about her. It's so pitiful. I don't want to end up like her. Although I wasn't sure what my mother-in-law was plotting, seeing my child cry softened my heart just a tad. I picked him up and wiped away his tears. Silly boy, even if your dad and mom get a divorce, we will still love you. Our love for you won't change. A glimmer of hope lit up in his eyes, really? I nodded affirmatively. But then, my mother-in-law coughed, as if to remind him of something. My son seemed to remember, quickly adding, but if you do love me, you shouldn't divorce dad and sell the house. If you sell the house, where will we live as a family? I sighed, stroking Vincent's hair, but, honey, grandma is sick. If we sell the house, we're going to have the money to help her. Grandma is always so good to you, you don't want her to get hurt, do you? After my explanation, my son sank into deep thought, only for my mother-in-law to give another intentional cough. It seemed to jolt Vincent into speaking again, but grandma's illness is incurable. If you sell the house to treat her, I won't have a school to attend. Dad and grandma will be homeless. Mom, you only care about grandma and don't consider me and dad at all. You're a bad mom. After he finished speaking, he angrily broke free from my embrace and ran crying into my mother-in-law's arms. Hearing Makoto's words was painful, but hearing my son's accusations was like a knife piercing my heart. I couldn't believe that the son I had raised with such care would blurt out these words, a complete ingrate. My mother-in-law gave Vincent a satisfied look, then started lecturing me with an air of superiority. See, even our Vincent knows that cancer is a bottomless pit. It's impossible to cure. Only you're still crazy enough to want to treat your mom's illness. Even if you don't consider Makoto and me, you should think about Vincent, right? As Vincent's mother, you not only disregard his future, but even want to sell your house and hamper his progress. You fulfill your filial duty at his expense, what will Vincent do in the future? He is a boy after all. Without a house in the future, how can he find a wife? My son leaned against his grandmother, and hearing these words, he looked at me angrily, as if I was a real villain who abandoned my husband and children. However, all I wanted was to use my own money to treat my mother's disease. What did I do wrong? I sneered and retorted, if the one with cancer was you, would you brazenly tell your son to give up treatment, Judy? I want to retrieve my own money, what right do you have to morally blackmail me here? Judy was blasted by my merciless words, her eyes instantly turned red, and tears filled her eyes. At this moment, Makoto finally rushed out of the bedroom. Seeing his mother crying like this, and I was still standing indifferently on the side, he lost his temper. He snapped, Willow, why are you cursing my mom? 
she was just kindly advising you, you don't have to listen, but do you have to say such cruel words? What a joke, my mother-in-law had just scolded me so much, and Makoto didn't say a word. Yet when I just retorted, he couldn't wait to blame me. I no longer have a shred of illusion about Makoto, just disgust. I raised my eyebrows and retorted, oh, did I say anything wrong? Isn't it you who said if your mother has cancer, you would give up treatment and let her go home to wait for death? So when you curse your mother it's okay, but when I say it, it's not. Isn't this just shifting the conflict? Anyone can do this. My mother-in-law shifted the conflict between Makoto and me to a conflict between me and my son. I, likewise, shifted the conflict between them and me into an internal conflict among them. As it appears so far, the effect is considerably significant. My mother-in-law looked at Makoto in disbelief, and seeing Makoto's face was somewhat unnatural, she immediately understood. She turned to Makoto, crying and accusing him, You unfilial son, is this how you speak of your mother? Is it easy for me to raise you with toil and moil? You ungrateful wretch! Look, not long ago, you spoke so righteously about letting me give up treatment for my mother, but when it comes to you, you get angry. What a double standard you have! Mikoto hurriedly tried to pacify his mother. Mom, I didn't mean that. If something happens to you, I will definitely save you. Could I say anything else to make Willow agree to give up the treatment? The last two sentences were spoken in a very low voice, but I still heard them. At that moment, I was filled with contempt for Makoto. I rolled my eyes and coldly retorted, Oh, so you said that purely to make me give up treatment for my mother and to keep this house. Makoto, Makoto, you are even more disgusting than I imagined. Makoto was provoked by my words. He utterly cast aside his disguise, revealing his true greedy nature. I just don't want to sell the house, so what? It's your mom who's sick, not mine. Why should I sell my house to pay for your mom's treatment? Willow, don't look at me like that. You're not any nobler than me. You only have your mother in your eyes, you've never considered me, and Vincent. I'm just doing this to preserve Vincent's property. He declared, let me tell you, we can divorce, but between the house and the child, you choose one. You can't have it all. I knew what he was trying to do, he wanted to ensnare me with maternal love, to make me give up my half of the house for Vincent's custody. But he was mistaken. What is custody compared to my mother's life? Let alone the custody of an ungrateful child. I gave my response without a second thought, there is no need to choose. That half of the house is mine, and no one can take it. As for who the child wants to be with, he will make his own decision. I will not interfere with that. Mikoto became desperate. What if I refuse to divorce? If I just hold on for a few months and don't sell the house or divorce, once your mom passes away, we will naturally save the money. Let's see what you can do then. However, I was not angry at all. I looked at him as if he was a fool. Do you think you can save money by not selling the house or divorcing? Are you not aware of loans? I can completely take a loan to treat my mother. With this house, I can borrow even more. Anyway, we are not divorced, so you will also have to repay the loan in the future. By then, don't regret the decision you're making now. You can decide whether or not to go to the Civil Affairs Bureau tomorrow. But if the divorce doesn't go through, I will take out a loan. There must be a way to treat my mother's illness. With that, I ignored the curses of Makoto and his mother, took my luggage, and left in style. If others don't agree to open the window, then advocate for tearing down the roof. They will surely agree to open the window when compared with the greater harm. Driven by interests, I am sure that Makoto will compromise. Not long after I had left, I received a phone call. It was from the hospital. Is this Miss White? I'm sorry, due to a mix-up by one of our interns, the medical reports of Mrs. Judy and Mrs. Margarita were accidentally swapped. I felt like I'd just been hit by a bolt from the blue. Tentatively, I asked, what do you mean? They explained the mishap to me over the phone. A wave of euphoria rushed over me, and I blurted out, so you mean, it's not my mother who has stomach cancer, it's my mother-in-law? The person on the other end of the line confirmed, yes, that's correct. If you have time, please bring them to the hospital for another free examination. I don't remember how I hung up the phone. I only felt the heavy burden on my shoulders suddenly lift, leaving me in a state of lightheadedness and surreal post-disaster survival happiness. After the initial joy, I suddenly felt that this was fate intervening. 
This mix-up was essentially a blessing and gift from heaven. If the illness had been diagnosed as my mother-in-law's problem from the beginning, I would not have seen the true faces of my mother-in-law and Makoto. Perhaps I would even have foolishly spent all I had and devoted all my time to saving her. Arriving swiftly at my mother's house, I dashed up the stairs and opened the door. What I hadn't expected was to hear an unpleasant voice the moment I stepped in, a family that practices kindness is bound to be blessed, and a family that wallows in wickedness will suffer. No wonder you got cancer, because you're all selfish. I saw my mother sitting listlessly on the sofa, with a look of fear and disbelief in her eyes as a stream of scathing insults came from the video call on her phone. She seemed on the verge of breaking down. Seeing this, I was filled with fury. I quickly approached and grabbed my mom's phone. Who are you calling a selfish devil, you old hag? I tell you, if anyone's going to die first, it's going to be you. You will surely die before my mom, and when you do, I'll celebrate with gongs and drums. After scolding her, I hung up the phone before Judy could react and immediately blocked her number. I absolutely will not give her the chance to harass my mother anymore. The anger in my heart had not subsided when I looked up to see my mother's distressed face. She asked me in a trembling voice, Willow, is it true that your mother-in-law claimed that I have cancer? Afraid that she would be overly alarmed, I hastened to explain to her that it was all a misunderstanding. I then told her the ins and outs of this mix-up, explaining that it was actually my mother-in-law, not her, who had cancer. Initially, she didn't believe me. Only after I had called the hospital again and she heard the truth from the doctor's mouth did she finally breathe a sigh of relief. Once her emotions calmed down, she asked me, what are you going to do about your mother-in-law now that she has cancer? What if she blames you and takes advantage of you, Willow? You should really figure out a plan for yourself. Looking at the worry in her eyes, I quickly grasped what she meant. She was afraid that I would still love Makoto despite everything, that I would relinquish everything for him to sort out his mess, that I would compromise my own life in order to take care of a cancer-stricken mother-in-law. But she was worrying over nothing, I was now more clear-headed than ever. My husband was simply a selfish soul, my son an ingrate. I would not sacrifice myself for these two any longer. From now on, I will live for myself and my mother. Placing my hand on my mother's, I reassured her, don't worry, mom. I won't give them any opportunity to hurt me again. The next day, I arrived at the Civil Affairs Bureau, as agreed. When I got there, I found that Makoto had arrived before me. He leaned against the car with a gloomy face, looking as if someone owed him millions. As soon as he saw me, he walked towards me with a stern expression. I smiled and said, oh, you came early. You must be really afraid that I'll take out a loan. Makoto snorted coldly, you are a heartless man. Your mother has cancer, and you're still laughing. I rolled my eyes internally, well, it's still debatable whose mother has cancer. Even though I felt contemptuous inside, I remained nonchalant on the surface, of course I have to laugh when it comes to divorcing you. It's a joyous occasion. Mikoto was stumped by my words, his eyebrows twisted like a pretzel. He said angrily, you indeed have a sharp tongue. Perhaps your mother's cancer was caused by your acerbic words or it's a punishment for your loose talk. It's just retribution. Because he was unwilling to give up his half of the house, he used what he thought were the most vicious words to taunt me. He wished to provoke me and see me break down, to start doubting myself, falling into endless pain and suffering. His aim would then have been achieved. But luckily, the situation with my mother was just a mere misunderstanding, and I was immune to his verbal stabs at this point. I retorted, well, if my words can cause cancer, then you and your mother should rush to the hospital to get checked. Since I've scolded you both so much, you must both be in late-stage cancer by now. Mikoto was choked by my comeback again. He was so angry he looked like he could eat me alive, Willow, don't push it. Do you believe I can just leave right now? Then your mother won't get any money for her treatment. I looked at him calmly and said lightly, it's up to you. It's not like we can't get a loan. Just don't cry when it's time to repay the loan. Mikoto was frightened. He pondered for a moment and finally compromised, all right, I agree to the division of property. But on the condition that the child is mine, and you need to pay me alimony as needed. Your mother's medical expenses are none of my business from now on. You can't come to me for money because of your mother's illness. He was truly afraid that I would cling to him. I gave birth to a child for him, but when he found out about my mother's cancer, he not only didn't want to share a penny of the burden, but was still thinking about child support. 
He was so selfish and heartless. However, I didn't want to be entangled with him any longer. To get a divorce as soon as possible, I nodded, okay, I agree. Since we had reached a consensus, the divorce procedure went smoothly. We only had to wait a month to get the divorce certificate. After leaving the Civil Affairs Bureau, I contacted the real estate agent with Makoto and put our house on their official website. Before we parted, I kindly reminded him, I sincerely suggest that you take your mom to the hospital for an examination. Perhaps your mom really has stomach cancer? Early detection and treatment are best. Although my tone was sincere, there was an obvious element of mockery on my face. Seeing my playful smile, Makoto got angry, Willow, how many times have I told you, don't curse my mother. If you say that again, believe it or not, I'll be rude to you. I quickly seized my laughter, pursed my lips and said sorrowfully, okay, I won't mention it from now on. Makoto seemed satisfied with my response. He glanced at me disdainfully and walked away. I breathed a sigh of relief, pulled out my phone, and stopped the recording. I had fulfilled my responsibility to warn him. Mikoto, this was your own refusal to believe. To prevent things from being revealed, I sent my mother on a one-month travel tour to relieve her stress. The house was priced reasonably, so we quickly found a suitable buyer. Mikoto and I split the money from the house sale immediately, half and half, no one taking advantage of the other. Soon, the one-month period passed, and I successfully obtained the divorce certificate. The moment I got the divorce certificate, Makoto and I both heaved a sigh of relief, mutually comforted that we no longer had to bear each other's responsibilities. Makoto somehow took a strange turn and started a conversation with me as if he were explaining something, Willow, don't think that I'm heartless. You should know that any man would run away in such circumstances. Cancer is like a bottomless pit. If you insist on treating your mother, no matter how rich I am, I would be drained sooner or later. I must think for our son. I can't act impulsively like you. For the first time, I didn't refute his words but nodded in agreement, mm, you're right. I should learn from you. Mikoto was clearly unprepared for my response. He scratched his head a bit, laughed, and said, you understand, that's good. I just smiled, noncommittal. Apparently fearing I might ask him for money. The next day after getting the divorce certificate, I noticed a moment on his social media where Makoto posted about buying a car. I looked it up, the car was at least four to five hundred thousand. He likely used the remaining money from the house sale as a down payment, trapping himself in a 30-year mortgage. The rest of his money must be almost gone. While browsing social media, I saw a video posted by Judy. In the video, all her relatives had gathered to celebrate the new year. Everyone had a smile on their face. My mother-in-law, holding Vincent, jokingly asked, Vincent, what's your New Year's wish? Vincent responded almost instantly, I want a new mom. Everybody burst into laughter. My mother-in-law, laughing hard with creases forming on her face, asked, why? Wasn't the previous mother good? Vincent shook his head, as if it were a bobblehead, responding, no good, no good. She's a mean mom. She's a haggard old woman who always gives money to her own family. Vincent doesn't want her. Daddy and Grandma are nice to me. Vincent wants a young and beautiful new mom. Despite being prepared, hearing my son's words was inevitably disappointing. I pride myself on putting a lot of effort into my child's education, but whether it's due to genetics or the influence of his grandmother, he ended up the way he is now. If I was hesitating before, now I've completely made up my mind to give up on this child. I cancelled Vincent's piano lessons, costing 2,100 per session, and all other after-school classes he was attending. This way, I was saving two to 3,000 a month. Wouldn't that money be better spent on clothes for my mother and me instead of this ungrateful boy? This decision didn't sit well with my mother-in-law. The next day, she started venting her anger downstairs in my building, Willow. Come out. It's between you and my son if you want to divorce, but why take it out on the child? You cancelled his tutoring classes, what is he going to do in the future? Aren't you being too irresponsible? I wouldn't let her slander me. I picked up my phone and went downstairs. When she saw me, her berating became fiercer. Do you know how bitterly he is crying at home? He thinks you despise him, that you divorced their father and also cancelled his piano lessons. How can you be so heartless? I looked at her with confusion, wasn't it you who didn't give me custody of my son? How did it turn into me not wanting him now? 
Besides, I just sent over his child support a few days ago. That money is more than enough for his after-school classes. Upon hearing my words, the onlookers understood and their gazes towards me were more sympathetic, while their gazes towards Judy were full of disdain. The facts were clear. I was a pitiful mother who had lost custody of my child, while Judy and her son were wrongdoers who had taken advantage and were still pretending to be victims. They had not only taken the child from me but also asked for child support every month and even billed me for the child's tutoring. The whispering from the onlookers made Judy's face burn like fire, she glared at me angrily and snapped, no wonder your mother has cancer, it's all karma. I was puzzled again, ah, who said my mom has cancer? You must have misunderstood my mom's medical report, you're the one who has cancer. What, didn't your son tell you? At this, Judy couldn't mask the fear evident on her face. She forced herself to remain calm and said, what are you joking about? Your mom has been hospitalized for a long time. Don't scare me. At the end of her words, my mom returned. She just finished doing a workout, dressed beautifully, and radiated health from head to toe. How could there be any signs of illness? Judy was stunned. I continued, see, my mom is very healthy. Strange, I clearly told Makoto before and even encouraged him to take you to the hospital for a checkup. Why is he so careless? As what I was saying didn't seem to be false, and the way I looked at her even showed some sympathy, Judy finally believed. She collapsed on the spot, vomited a mouthful of old blood, and passed out. In the end, I was the one who called the ambulance to take her to the hospital. One hour later, Makoto hastily arrived at the hospital, followed by two police officers. It was obvious that he had called the police, intending for me to be apprehended. His eyes were red with rage. The moment he saw me, he pointed and yelled, Officer, it's her. For the sake of our divorce, she concealed my mother's illness, delaying her treatment. Arrest her now however, before he could finish speaking, I slapped him. Scolding him passionately, I fumed, you beast. I had told you to take your mother to the hospital for a checkup a month ago, why didn't you listen? Now she lies there, her life hanging in the balance. Are you satisfied? Mikoto stared at me in disbelief, as if he were wondering what to say now that I had spoken his lines. But I didn't give him an opportunity to retort, and instead I continued on my tirade, the woman lying there is your own mother. When my mother fell ill, you divorced me to shirk responsibility, that's one thing. But the woman lying there is the mother who bore and raised you. You didn't tell her about her condition and withheld her treatment in order to save money, are you even a human? Anxious and defensive, Makoto tried to argue, I didn't, you are slandering. Ignoring him, I played the audio recording. The recording captured my sincere pleas for him to take his mother for medical examination, stating that her illness could possibly be stomach cancer. However, Makoto was quick to dismiss the claims impatiently, accusing me of cursing his mother repeatedly and threatened to teach me a lesson. The timing of the recording was the day after the hospital notified me. Mikoto's repeated use of again in his words indicated that I had advised him prior to this conversation, but he chose not to heed it. I looked at him, disappointment etched on my face, it's not I who harmed your mother, it's your concealment of the illness that did. What's more, I have reason to suspect that you deliberately didn't want your mom to get treatment, so you kept her in the dark. After I told you about your mother's condition, you spent money lavishly, buying cars and houses, without leaving a penny for her medical expenses. It's as if you were deliberately playing with her life. Under the scrutinizing gaze of the police, Makoto's face flushed instantly. He was flustered and fumbled to defend himself, nonsense. I was just afraid of lending you money, I never intended to harm my mother. I countered calmly, why would I want to borrow money from you? My mother isn't ill, yours is. Your excuse doesn't hold up. Mikoto couldn't find an excuse to retort, he was infuriated to the extent he couldn't put words together. In his anger and humiliation, Mikoto shockingly attempted to throw a punch at me, exclaiming, I've had it with you. Of course, his punch never reached me. I swiftly moved behind the police officers, then silently stuck my tongue out at him, causing the officers to laugh, trying to get physical in front of us? Do you think we're here just for show? Mikoto burst into tears, I didn't. It was her. I'm not. The police officers didn't bother listening to his explanation. Instead, they sternly reprimanded him and took him back to the station for a thorough introspection. The police car that he had called to arrest me ended up taking him away. 
Before leaving, I reminded him to transfer the medical expenses I had paid to me. Finally, under Makoto's murderous glare, I gracefully made my exit. Judy's stomach cancer was in the middle and late stages. Makoto was now faced with two options. One, he could spare no expense on his mother's treatment, but then he would have to sell his newly bought car and house and probably also accrue a heavy debt. The second option was as he had suggested earlier abstaining from treatment and instead taking his mother on a travel adventure, allowing her to enjoy her remaining days on a journey. However, it was both hilarious and sad when he eventually chose a third solution, get medical treatment for his mother, but not spend a dime of his own money. It really made me wonder if he had been kicked in the head by a donkey, as he incredibly thought to borrow money from me. On the phone, he had the audacity to say, Willow, it's not like you're spending your money on anything right now. Considering our past relationship, lend me some money for my mother's treatment. This is a matter of life and death, you can't refuse to help, right? I found his audacity surreal, and I flatly refused him, ridiculing him a few times, impossible. Really strange, why are you borrowing money for your mother's treatment? Didn't you say cancer is incurable? You should be packing your bags and taking your mother on a tour. Then, amidst Makoto's uncontrollable roar, I hung up the phone, trying to suppress my laughter. Later, I got a call from Vincent. He was crying on the phone, asking me for money, Imam, grandma is sick and needs a lot of money for treatment. Can you send money over? I unreservedly refused him, of course not. When your grandmother was sick, you wouldn't let me save her. When your other grandma is sick, you shouldn't be asking me for money. As soon as I finished, Vincent burst into tears, cursing me angrily, bad mom, I don't want you anymore. You won't save my grandma now. When you're old, I won't take care of you. I cheerily responded, I never expected you to. With that, I ignored Vincent's tantrum and hung up the phone. I thought the matter would end there, but Makoto and his family made a big deal out of this phone call. A few days later, I saw myself trending on local hot searches. They edited and synthesized the recordings, portraying me as a villainous woman who divorced and ran away after discovering that her mother-in-law had cancer. In order not to hinder my future prospects of getting married, I gave up both my young son and my cancer-stricken mother-in-law, leaving them to Makoto. In the video, Makoto, teary-eyed, recounted his trials and tribulations. The backdrop was Judy's hospital room, and Vincent, showing maturity beyond his years, was pouring water for Judy. Since Makoto was quite handsome, he attracted a wave of female fans who sympathized with him. To help him weather this difficult time, they generously opened their wallets, raising a six-figure sum in charity within a few short days. At the same time, my private messages were also being filled with hate, are you even human? You know your mother-in-law has cancer, but you just left your husband and son and ran away. How can you be so heartless? Your mom will get cancer sooner or later too. This is your punishment. Women and villains are hard to raise. This saying is proven true in your case. To be honest, I wasn't angry at all seeing these messages. I could already imagine their ashamed faces when they found out the truth and came to apologize. To be honest, it was quite funny. Without hesitation, I began to compile the evidence I had at hand, preparing a counterattack. Due to the nature of my job, where I need to contact clients often, all my phone calls are automatically recorded to not miss any crucial information. I compiled all my recent call recordings with Makoto, including his opposition to treating my mom's cancer, and the way he shamelessly said, if it was his mother who was sick, he would just let it be, and so on. These recordings became compelling evidence that effectively condemned Makoto. Once the video was uploaded, it caused a major uproar. Makoto's reputation plummeted from a saint to a hypocritical and selfish jerk. Meanwhile, I transformed from a gold digger who avoids harm into a strong-willed heroine, praised by everyone. They said my experience was like a satisfying fiction story come true. Makoto's popularity became my popularity, the law of the conservation of popularity. As a result, I accumulated a lot of fans and became a minor internet celebrity. The video of the counterattack was so popular that businesses even asked me if they could insert their advertisements in the comment section. However, I declined. After all, Makoto's mom is terminally ill and people might end up feeling sorry for her. Once the storm settles, I don't want to be accused of profiting from Makoto's mother's misery. I was not in a rush to make money off their predicament. Makoto deleted his account and fled, due to many netizens demanding a refund.
He used the excuse that all the money had been used for his mother's treatment and refused to refund them. Although he managed to keep the money, his reputation was destroyed. Allegedly, he was fired from his company because of this incident and became unemployed. Under the immense financial pressure, he finally chose to let his mother give up her treatment and took her home for herbal medicine treatment. As for me, I achieved financial freedom because of this cyberbullying event. While Makoto and his mother were eating simple meals at home, I was vacationing abroad with my mom. As I lay on the golden beach, basking in the sea breeze and sunlight, I once again received a call from Vincent. The call was noisy, and I could faintly hear Makoto arguing with his mother. Vincent was crying and seemed to be scared. He wept and pleaded, Mom, I'm sorry, I know I was wrong now. Dad and Grandma don't care for me anymore. Dad sometimes even hits me. I don't want to be with Dad, can I live with you in the future? I miss you and Grandma. Did he really realize his mistake? Not necessarily. The reason he chose me now was only because life with me is better than the one he currently has, just like the reason he chose Makoto before. I will never forget his betrayal, so I gently said, no, I'm a bad mom. You should go find your young and pretty new mom. Then, despite his cries, I hung up the phone and put his number on the blacklist. From then on, apart from paying him a fixed amount of child support, I had no contact with him or Makoto. By the way, my account was registered under my mom's name, and I was supposedly a little worker earning a few thousand yuan a month from her. Even in child support payments, it was capped at 2,000 yuan a month. I wouldn't allow Makoto to take any more advantage of my finances. From now on, my money would only be spent on my mom and myself. It is only for the two of us that I will live. After going through all the thorns and hardships, my life will be smoother from now on.